Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're over on Jing's account for the purpose of looking at a maxed out Ukyo because, you know, it, it was a bit up and down whether he was good or bad or in between. So we're going to go through him, go through the maxed out signature item and talk about where he's useful and then test him as well. So let's get into the video. The first thing to note is that we do not have the factional gear, so we don't have the dimensional faction on the gear, so we are losing some stats from that. However, we do have the level 30 signature item, but I just want to go through his skills quickly and talk about him um, before we get into it. So his ultimate, he basically jumps up in the air, does a big spin, and then on the last hit knocks the enemies up, and he's immune to all damage while he's using it, which is nice. Uh, this one here, he brings his sword out, does like a quick little AoE where he just like sort of slashes, you can see it in the background there, does that AoE. Then you've got this ability, um, when there's no enemies in your close proximity, he basically darts at them and hits them a few times, knocking them back and stunning them. And then this one here, this final ability, uh, he leaps into the air, um, dealing damage to nearby enemies. The thing that this doesn't state is that it actually makes him go, like he, he leaps backwards in the process of this. So if we go back and if we actually look at him through here, and we go to test hero, if we go test hero here, you see he'll do his little slashes and then he'll do his AOE and then he'll do a leap, but he jumps backwards when he does his leap, which lets him activate that stun again. So that that's the great synergy that when you first read him, you don't realize um, because he does do that. That was his ultimate there, but he's going to do that. He's going to leap. Okay, there's enemies to, all over the place. But normally if he doesn't kill them straight away, he does that, um, that leap back, which he's, he's darting around too much. Anyway, he does his leap back. If we go retry, if we go exit, we go test hero. So he's going to go dart, 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 and then he's going to go AOE, and then he's going to go leap back, and then it's going to set him up to do his stuns again, and that is the nice thing about him. Really nice CC. He's immune to damage when he's spinning. Uh, he's, he's immune to frontal damage, um, and he interrupts. He's just, it sounds like he's an absolute beast, but basically from what I've heard, uh, he sucks in campaign and in tower because when enemies are leveled above him, he's just too squishy. Common problem, um, especially like in early game, not a problem for a lot of um, the agility heroes, but in late game, they just melt basically, especially the melee ones that have to run forward. They just get into that melee range. They don't have the tanky stats. They don't dodge enough and they die. Um, but this this um, signature item is really nice. The ability can be used once per battle. After using his ultimate ability, he will be immune to control attacks, um, control abilities for eight seconds. His attack rating will be increased by twenty percent, and his leech life uh, will be increased by ten points. And then, as you can see, you get the increases on that, and then it can be used up to three times per battle. So he wants to be able to survive in in the battle a bit longer. I'm going to quickly check out of curiosity. Has the Riz already done the Riz battles? I uh, think, think not the greatest in Riz anyway. Um, but the thing I want to look at is campaign first. But the area that it really works and where Jing has been using him in the main team, as you can see, sitting here at position two on the um, arena ladder. Uh, if we just go in here and just look at something, that is the main team setup. So he's made it into the main um, arena offense team uh for this account which is which is which is nice for him i mean it's a really solid team even without him in it like really solid but um it has been in the main attacking team that they've been using uh but if we go to campaign so we'll just go have it here and have a quick look and you'll sort of see the um the, the not so goodness of him so let's have a look he really, okay, so the <laughs> the first thing I noticed is he does not synergize at all with this team. Um, maybe we just take Arthur out. Let's just do this. Bad move. But the problem is if I put him down here, he's going to go to do his stuns. And then Eron's going to drag them in, so it's not even going to matter. Um, and I don't really want to take Eron out for him. Let's just, let's just have a look and see what happens. So, let's do this. And obviously, you know, these, these later stages of the game, you're getting stuck pretty hard at these stages. So you can't clear this stage anyway, but um, just curious. Wow, look at the shredding. He actually he actually survived not too bad then because he, he actually did go and hit the Ira, which did help out a bit. And he managed to dodge that ability because he was using his little cleave thing. Ooh, we got an Eron ult there. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think hmm. it's it, it is very tough to gauge campaign. Let's just have a look at how this account goes with the with the main team. It's hard to gauge these sort of things when it's not your account and you haven't been playing it the whole time. But I mean, Tassie gets an ult, which is nice on that one. Okay, as you can see, the team is working a lot better without him. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, ca the campaign, when you're looking at it in terms of um, playing on someone else's account, is actually really, really difficult, especially at this late stage. Um, but yeah, just the general overview from everyone that I've spoke to in this in the late game sort of thing, which is like chapter 25 and later that has built him, is that it, campaign and tower isn't really the place for him. Arena is the place he can work. He's not the, the best. He's not godly in arena, um, but he can work. So if we go here, let's check out uh, baby. Got too many. Uh, well, we'll just test this one first. We'll do a few battles, uh, but this one we got. We've obviously got twelve levels on it, so we should just really dominate. But the I think what makes him good in arena is one: if the battles go longer and he uses his ultimate, then he's going to start stacking his buff. Two, he just has a good solid CC. So you'll we'll see at the start here. He's just going to go in straight away, stun that. Um, he stunned at the Lucius from the very start before he got drawn in. Actually, the the, the synergy with Iron when Iron's in the middle is not bad because he gets the stun early, and then Iron drags them and they're still stunned, and then he goes and stuns the next guy. I actually kind of like that synergy. Um, let's take a look. And obviously, Iron just carry, carried the day there. Like <laughs> Iron is a beast. Uh, but let's let's check out Barbie. Okay, this is a bit closer. So that's actually quite. I actually do like this. I'm actually also the other thing is um, apparently he's really good. He's like he works better, which is what I sort of found through my testing with like a Gwyneth type account. So I'm thinking I will buy this guy on my Gwyneth account. Maybe work to maxing out his signature item and then test him over there. Um, apparently that's where some people are having some success with him as well, but this one, it's not gonna be too bad. So what we're going to see is I'm going to go ahead cause I kind of want to kill the, um, the Shimura. So we'll leave it in this formation. So what he's going to do is he's going to stun the Grizzle. So Grizzle won't do anything, which Grizzle isn't much of a threat anyway. So it's not too big of a deal. Uh, but then he's going to draw those three in and then we're going to get Ukiyo to go ahead and start stunning the Shimura and basically lock her out for the rest of the fight. I do like this as a way to just... Ah, uh, she got banished. Well, that didn't work how I wanted it to. <laughs> but that sort of strategy, if the Shamira didn't get banished, it just makes him a back row lockout when you pair him with the Iron, which I actually do like. Let's try Let's try another team and see if we can get that demonstrated. Okay, this guy's higher level. This guy's a higher level. It's not going to work on this one because it's got the Athalia. But we're gonna just we're just gonna go ahead and do this anyway because that way we're gonna stun the Shamira at the very start of the battle. Then Iron's gonna drag it in. Then we're gonna move because the Ithalia will be back here. He should move to the bunch of the three of them and start cleaving the three. So we're just gonna see how this works. We'll let the Nara take the um, the Lyca. That's not really a big issue. Okay, he ended up going back on the Ithalia and killing her. Nice. There's his ult. So he's got his ult. Now he's immune to CC, which is nice. Wow, this is a solid team. This is actually a really solid team. Let's check. And there you go. As you can see, those fights that last a little bit longer, he does start to ramp up the damage, especially when he starts getting the, getting getting his ult off one to get the damage out from it, and two to um to actually ramp up his damage and his and his life leech. Like it's not too bad, actually. I quite impressed with that one. Okay, let's go again. Uh, he's really low power. Wow, that guy. Why is everyone else at 10 mil and this guy's at 20 mil? Okay, I I don't think we're beating that guy. I, I don't. I, someone's sitting at rank two. I don't really want to. I don't really want to go. And um, <laughs> I feel like we're not going to beat that. And this one, I think, is a bit too high for us as well. Oh, that's such a solid. That's a solid grade born team. I kind of want to see it, but she said that, uh, but Jing said that that's, that that's a, a bad enemy to fight. So, <laughs> so we're not going to do that. So let's, let's see this one. Okay. I think this is the same team again. Is it 307? I can't remember, but we're going to try it anyway. 
so, oh no, this is different. So this one, we're going to actually end up locking out him. So this is what I wanted to test earlier. This is just, this is not like the ideal comp to do it to. I just want to test out the theory that with Iron, you're going to be stunning the Shamira straight up. Then Iron takes them back there. And then he should just lock out this bottom hero here. So let's see. And then if he deletes the uh, forks, everyone's grouped up because Rosaline runs in as well. And then you're just cleaving everyone, which is really nice. Provided Iron doesn't kill them all first. There you go. Goes straight down and starts locking out that um, that Forks with the stuns. Now he's going to do this backflip and then go stun him again. So it is a really solid lockout. Then he gets that AoE from his ult. And if the enemies actually survived a bit longer, that's when you'll start to see his damage top the Iron. But because it was a quick battle, Iron's probably going to top the damage charts. No. Okay. Ukio with the tops again. Okay, not too bad. Let's. I, I'm just curious to see Iron's gear, just quickly. So if we go here and check, and Iron's in full faction gear as well with the blade, um, and Ukio's still just got grace on it. So, I mean, that's not bad damage considering. I feel like blade, like if you try and use him as main damage, would be really nice. But I feel like he's always going to be a secondary damage dealer. He's there primarily for that that CC, um, that constant lockout on one hero, and then. The damage is like a ramp up type of thing. So he's there to sustain someone else to do damage and then he can ramp up towards the end. That's the way I'm seeing him. But once again, campaign, he just he seems to struggling. But I mean, the arena, when, you, when you're when fighting people at a similar level, uh, 285 too low. What's this guy at? 307. All right, let's have a look at this one. So, ooh, this one's going to be nice. This one's actually going to be nice because we're going to stun... I just, I really want Iron not to kill everyone. I really want Iron not to kill everyone. Or we could go the, the path of this, where we stun the Lucius, and then we go ahead and lock out the Blinder. Let's let's try that. We stun the Lucius, then we go stun the Blinder, and then we just lock out the Blinder while the rest of the team cleaves everyone else. Because then he's going to go backwards, then he's going to stun. Man, this is such a solid team. To be honest, he really didn't need to be there between the fears and the sleeps and stuff like that. But wow, that was an Euron carry and a half. Okay, I'm actually really, I, I'm actually liking the idea of this, but I don't know whether it's because we're just getting carried harder by the rest of the team, which is probably the case. But hey, another 307. This is that one again. Let's just take another look. I mean, Euron in that back row is doing so much work, especially once the Rosaline runs in. It's so good. It is so good. Okay, Lucius got the shield then, except Iron altered and just destroyed everyone. Okay, Ukio did get a good uh, good ult there. Curious to see the damage. I think iron has got it. Yeah, Iron definitely got that one. But hey, that is the Ukio. Basically, I was just having fun there. I forgot we were <laughs> really recording the video because I was just having fun using him in this arena. This is cool. But... Um, but yeah, the main takeaway from Ukio, because he is available for like another, I don't know, 100 days or something to purchase, whatever, however many days. If you want to buy him, um, he is going to be purchasable with money only. And then once the time ends, I'm pretty sure you can't get him. So I am going to buy him on one account. I think it's going to be the Gwyneth account uh, and we'll work on him from there. I just, the knockback synergy with Gwyneth is kind of nice so i think that's where i'm going to get him but we'll do more on him in the future but that's just a first look at him in that sort of late to end game type phase um batting campaign and tower decent in arena is the general takeaway uh from that if you guys are using him in this sort of late game even if you're using him earlier game let me know what you think of him um if you've had more testing with him because the general consensus of him early was that he was just bad but uh, doesn't seem to be absolutely horrible in every aspect. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.